All right. Today, we're going to take this central Seagate NAS unit apart that you see here. And you're going to need a few tools to be able to get into it and uh, complete this recovery process. First, you're going to need a USB that you can put a Linux distribution on. You're going to need a screwdriver to be able to take a couple screws out. Uh, a few pry tools. I uh, think we'll probably just need one, but I got some here. Something to put these screws and any other parts and pieces in and keep track of them. Uh, we'll also need a computer that we can hook the hard drive up to to actually get all our data off of. So to begin, let's go ahead and get everything out the way. And so we've determined that this unit was defective because this light just kept blinking. Whenever you attach it to a network or even to the back of a computer, all it does is keep blinking. Um, the only way to be able to reset the unit is to actually have a computer or network recognize the unit and then it'll have a solid blue light and you can hit that reset button and it should reset the unit. You can change your password and everything like that. So on the back you'll see we have a power connection, uh, Ethernet port, and then a USB port. The Ethernet port you can actually hook right up to a computer and don't have to be hooked up to a network and it should be recognized by the computer this unit is defective it's not doing that uh, the USB is mainly for uh, doing firmware updates or any kind of I think you can actually store some files on a USB on the NAS unit too but either way none of the connections are letting me connect to the computer so we're gonna take this hard drive out and get all our data off of it uh, the first thing we're gonna do is get our pry tool and pry this front plate off if you just pop the corner you can pry it in there and then twist it if you do a twisting motion it'll pop the little plastic tabs to where they'll release the plastic then you just do that same process stick it in there and twist it all the way down and problem solved we got the NAS units face plate off all right now we're gonna do the same process except for on okay there's a screw right here this is the small screw we're gonna have to take out Let's go ahead and screw that like that and, and take it out. Yeah. All right. So this might have already been taken apart one time. We are actually performing the data recovery in the background. So I actually have the hard drive out of this unit already, as you'll see here in a minute. But let's go ahead and take this back plate off now. Same process as the front. Put your pry tool in there and do little twist motions with the pry tool to separate it from the main housing of the unit. There we go. We'll pop that off, set it off to the side, don't lose it. And then we'll take the screw out right here. We're going to pretend to take the screw out because there's that, actually not a screw there. But for the purposes, there was supposed to be a screw there. I didn't put that screw back in when I put it together to show y'all how to take it back apart. Anyways, now we're going to have to separate the top part of the unit from the bottom so we can actually get in this housing case. This case. So what you're going to do is put your pry tool down down there and uh, go ahead and get you a little space and shove it in there not damaging any of the outside exterior so that people could you don't ever want to pry where you can see where it's being pried at and when you put it back together this part right here is actually going to be covered so you might see a few little pry marks but it's not a big deal because it's covered by the case by the faceplate so you pop it all the way down and it'll actually release pretty easily and there we have our cooling solution as well so you can see these little metal tabs uh, here we go you see the metal tabs right there that's actually hard that's a metal and it's the mesh that wraps the whole case so what happens is those metal tabs actually dissipate the heat and the heat is uh, I guess flowed through these little tabs on the actual unit itself down here so that's how they have the unit cooling and that's what I've read is that people are saying this unit is overheating so it's not they don't sell this unit anymore and it has terrible reviews which I'm sure y'all are aware of if you found this video but now we're gonna pop this off same concept just put your pry tool in there and pop pop it up it's held in there with little sticky sticky tabs and now we have our hard drive cage uh, these little sock shock absorbers we're gonna unscrew them 
and put them in our screw screw drawer. Boom 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 boom. All right. Now, so I told you I already took the hard drive out. Surprise! This is just a hard drive I slid in there for demonstration purposes. So these little copper tabs, you're gonna to want to peel them back because they actually dissipate. They help dissipate the heat from the hard drive and share it up to the cage area. Anyways, all right. So most of the time, you can just put your hand down on the top of the hard drive and push down and pull back, and it'll pop out of place. Um, this one I don't have a cover on this hard drive, so I can't really put my hand down on it and show you. But you just pull the hard drive straight out, and you'll see right here where the connections are. So this is where you're going to want to plug your hard drive into your computer. Um, you should have a SATA cable or some kind of connection to be able to hook your hard drive up to your computer. And then we can start the data recovery process. So now that we got the hard drive, um, I have SATA cables that I can hook my hard drive up to my computer and that's what I'm gonna do in the next steps so see you in the next video now I'm booted up to my live USB disk this is Linux Lite that I'm using and we're gonna go to the internet to get the software that we need to do the data recovery we're gonna type in r-linux and search that on the web and it should take you to one of the uh, top listings should be r-linux at rstudios.com and you'll go to the download page we're going to download the 64 Debian version and open with the package manager so that we can just go ahead and install it now I'll pause the video here because this is going to take a few minutes to download and then I'll come back when it's finished alright here it is finished we're going to go ahead and click on install package and it's going to install all Linux for us you'll see that install package changes to reinstall package so we know that it's installed we can close out all these windows and we'll go open that up um, first let's mount this USB this is a second USB that I'm gonna save the scan file to uh, I'll explain later but anyways let's go to system or Linux and open that up we'll agree to this and from here you'll be able to see all your hard drives and different partitions on them and everything this one is the one I'm working on. I, here, let me make it bigger. This is the one I know that I'm working on, and this is where my data is at. So I'll select it, and then I'll hit Scan. And then Scan's going to give me some options. I'm going to go ahead and click on Extra Folders, and then Save to File. Now, the Save to File is where we just mounted that USB. So we're going to go to our Media, Linux, U, Alpha OS, and actually go into AOS and here we have some scans that I've already saved we're just gonna click on that one hit save and then click on scan and it will go through and scan for documents or pictures whatever you have on your hard drive so the reason we made it save to a file so when we click stop it saves the information so we can load it and I've already done that so let me open the scan that I did actually let me show you something else if you have a corrupt area on your hard disk you can skip that corrupted hard that corrupted spot on the hard drive so what you'll do is click on advanced and you can actually specify what parameters you want to search so it's offset is where it starts at so you might want to start at like two terabytes and then the size is how much it's in a scan so you might want to scan you know at two terabytes and scan 500 gigs and you can use that to get past any corrupted uh, areas of the hard drive but anyways I've already scanned this so I'm gonna open my scan and you'll see that this is a lot of data up here and we'll go to raw files double click on that to get to our actual different types of files now you'll notice that it's separated by uh, file type so I'm gonna go in here to PNG image and I'm gonna click an image and you can preview it and see what it is and everything and you'll put a little checkbox beside it if you want to recover it so we'll do another one right here that one We'll put a checkbox on it and then after we check them we can go to recover marked up here and we'll look for a certain destination that we're where we want to save our files to um, we're just going to do this one on the desktop just for an example so and then I keep all the settings the same 
and hit OK and you'll see down here it says successfully restored two files. Now I'll go to my desktop and boom I've got my picture saved. So hopefully that helps you out on getting your data recovered. If you would give this video a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Y'all have a good one.